I suck at fishing, and I normally fish in salt water in Orlando, Florida area, either on the west coast or the east coast, but today I flew all the way up here to Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm from, so I might actually have a chance to catch some fish. Why are you closed, buddy? We need coffee after the fight. There's so many of these guitars. They're literally all over the city. But we're gonna be going out with my dad, doing some casting, and then some trolling for some walleye. How you doing, Mike? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Getting well, ready for the weekend? I don't know. It's gonna be pretty hot. We're gonna we're gonna cast for a little bit, so I'm probably gonna hit 48, okay. and then we're gonna run out probably to 62 when we don't catch any. I wanted to be the one that's casting. He's making fun of it. Not cool. Gotta grab some gas. And this water is clear. Like you're stunting for us today. When I was growing up, I don't remember it ever being this clear. And only the last couple of years, I think that as everybody's been getting their act together, like Yuri's kind of following suit, and the oysters really help with that. There's not been a lot of like mussel activity, oysters, clams, anything like that, fresh water for a long time in the lake. And I don't know if they're bringing them back, but I remember in high school when I was in my AP biology class, we went out to a place in Lake Erie and they talked about how basically they're just the best filter feeders. You just put a little bit of them in any lake or anything, and it's gonna turn crystal clear, which I think is one of the reasons why I think Lake Superior and Lake Michigan are a little bit clearer than Lake Erie. So not sure if that's what they're doing, but something's working right, because it's looking a lot better. Oh, look at all the fishies. Looks like they wanted to be our friends. Oh, there's a big fish down there. What the heck is that? You guys see that? I really hope you're able to see some of those drum or something from them. Oh my gosh, it's right here. That's a freshwater drum. We call them sheephead here in Ohio. And when I went to Florida, I realized that's not what they're called. They're a freshwater drum because sheephead's a very different fish, as you'll see right here. But super cool to see. Time to fly. in our area what are we looking at well on our screen currently we're sitting about 48 feet of water we got a couple fishies hanging off the bottom about five feet when they're down there usually aren't biting much because they probably filled up on water fleas and other things this morning got a little bit of a bait pocket sitting at 20 feet if we get some suspended off the bottom at 40 feet that's not bad but we'd like to see them around the 20 to 30 range and then sit on some lines of drip and catch like all of our fish today that would be a fun objective. I have no problem casting and hitting, but I don't think that's going to happen. That's fair. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if father's right or son is right. Oh, I have no reason to be right. If I'm right, it's just dumb luck, so. Basically what we were fishing with just there, this is called a worm harness. You fish it with the weight at the top of your leader, and then you got a leader, and one of these fancy little flashy things and a couple of hooks, slap a worm on it, and then you drift fish, which is where you just kind of set out. You don't have the anchor, 
and you cast and let the line drift and you're supposedly going to catch some fish that way. We got a lot growing up about 70 miles from here in the lake and there are a lot of fish that we would catch doing that. And I just like to cast anyways because I like feeling the bites, but nobody's been drift fishing and catching any fish lately. So we were only here for about 20, 20 minutes or so, not even maybe. And we're going to head out and actually catch some fish to go trolling. So we'll see you there. Somewhere out there. That was not fun. Heading in. Okay, see this shaft that goes out? Yeah. Okay, it goes out towards the back of the boat. It yep. extends another four feet. At okay. the end of that, there's a propeller. Yeah. I need you to look at the propeller, feel the propeller, see if any of the tines are bent okay. or cracked or missing. Okay, we can take a look at that. Thank you, sir. All right. Does there like a line or a wire around it? It feels like there's one around it. A line? Or a wire, yeah. Hey man, everything seemed fine on the boat. The prop was good, drive shaft was good. There's a little bit of rope under the prop and something that's a little bit loose. So we tightened it up, got the rope out, and now we're gonna see if we can go actually catch some fish, so. Round two in the same time. Please, Jesus. Make it run good. All right, round two. What's the plan, Daddy? Oh. Are you gonna cut yourself again? This is called a dipsy diver. It's got a clip that when it connects to the rod, when you catch a fish, it releases and you bring the fish in. You just got a spoon on the end. What do you got? Yep. Pretty. How far are you letting her out? 70 feet. 70 feet? Awesome. We're going to bring out a planer board in a second. I just want to get some rods in the water. Of course. 77. So this rod. Yeah. This is how you reset the counter. Okay. So when the lure hits the water, you reset the counter. And then you hear this is on the clicker. Yeah. That releases the clicker. Okay. So we always let it out with the clicker on. This stops it from going out. Yep. And this one we want to go to 55. So what's the deal with this guy? This actually acts like a. You'd see it similar would be a uh, uh, outrigger. All the way out there. We're going to use what's called a jet. Okay. With the spoon on the end of the jet. And this is designed to go 20 feet. It's got a size 20 on it. So when you let it out 100 feet off the back of the boat, it goes down 20 feet. Gotcha. And that would be a 30. Because I can do math. Think we'll catch him? Hope so. Much better chance of drifting. Bands and put an extra rubber band on so I know where I was. This we catch a fish. It goes in, I pull this down, just like a clothesline. So what happens with the rubber bands? When the fish hits it, they pop. Do they stay on the line or they break off in the water? Some break off, some stay on. Now we'll rig up the rest. Is that fishy? I don't know. First action. Get the freaking net. Feeling anything? Pretty blue jet. Good to see you again. Go catch me a fish. Just brought in the first walleye of the day. Wow. 
How big they gotta be to be legal again? Fifteen. Fifteen. So it's closer to eighteen. Woo Measure them up. Zero tip. Seventeen and a half looks like. Good fish. So the next step to get dispose of them fast and take care of the meat is bleed them by cutting through the gills, bleed them into our bucket. We'll show you that. And then we'll throw them on ice. But that's the first fish, hopefully 11 more to go and then we'll limit out. Number two is in the boat. Is that the same one? No, the other one's orange. This one's orange too. Look this at one it. This is 20 inches. It's uh, a good fish. And he is bleeding it. Ready to get a line? Two. Two. Just hooked up to our third fish, but unfortunately it's the most nuisance of a bycatch, which is basically when you catch a fish that you're not trying to catch. And here in Ohio, we call it sheephead. So it's basically, it's a freshwater drum, but it's a pretty fish, but they're not good to eat. So we're gonna throw it back. It's a good looking fishy. Number three. Eighteen and a half. Eighteen and a half. <laughs> awesome. And you put it in this release. Now this release goes like that. So when the ball goes down and the fish hits it, it pops it and comes right up. Oh, nice. Walleye 101, people. I guess maybe not because I never learned that and I caught a lot of walleye growing up. So maybe it's like 201. Walleye trolling 101, people. That's a good fishy. That's a great fish. He just got out of the net. Get out of the Look at that mouth. Whoo! Gnarly. Great fish. We're gonna call him 20 as well. Good fish, Dad. Two in a row with the worm. Two for the worms, two for the artificials. We'll eventually get me filming one of these, but uh, number five. Ooh. Biggest one of the day so far, just over 21. That's 21? Yeah, just over. Anthony's working on reeling in a fishy. What? Are these guys moving at all? Still? Not yet. Something out there, looks like a fish. I don't care about the other ones with it. I don't care about that. Ah, we'll see. That'll be real close. Sixteen and a half, baby. Sixteen and a half. That counts more than fifteen. How's the camera? Because <laughs> we're on the water. Well, please on something. I got a fish. So we're halfway to our twelve fish. We got six and. We caught three of them on artificials and three of them on worms, which are on this thing, which is called an Erie Deary, which I believe is named after the lake that we're on. But worms seem to be working. I would want some live food too if I was fishy.
everything in. Now we gotta go clean it and eat it. So we're back at my dad's and we got eight walleye today. And I'm gonna take the biggest one right now and show you one way to fillet it that I don't see a lot of people doing on YouTube. Most people are filleting with manual knives, which is actually my preferred way to do it, but, or my dad's, and his preferred way to do it is with an electric knife because it is way faster and easier, especially for him, when you're working with a lot of quantity of fish. But just as I'm not great at fishing, I'm not great at filleting. So we'll see how this actually goes. First fillet off, it left some meat on the bone, not a lot, but take the second side off, you can see exactly how much I left on there. Not the prettiest job, but you can almost see through it. That's not bad. Got bucket. How do you get so close to the thing? That's not great. No. Left some on. How do you skin it so close to it? Well, I leave it on the fish. So, what do you mean? I'll show you with the next one. Oh, you, oh no, I know what you mean. When you leave it on the fish. So you're more angled than I was. I'm pointing straight down. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting because with uh, when I normally fillet, I have to like lay my knife as flat to the table as I can. But with those, you're kind of going straight down at it. If you're interested in picking up one of those electric fillets, I'll leave a link to one in the description down below. Just a different way of doing it. So I use the fish for leverage. Mm. About to have five fish worth of meat after I'm done with these suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn. I believe in cons conservation, so I shouldn't be bad at this. So here, I just recorded myself filleting two fish so that you could see how long it takes me to do it. I sped it up four times to the actual speed, but as you can see, I just basically take off the side from the front of the fish like I would with a normal fillet, and then just fillet all the way down the skin until it's off. Then I'll take out the rib cage on both of the fish, which does take a little more meat off than I would like. However, when you're using this electric knife, speed is operative. So what I'm doing here is a little bit interesting. My dad taught me this the day that I was there fishing with him. But what I'm doing is basically taking two slits right next to either side of the bloodline, and then I'm able to rip down the fish and the bloodline comes out of it, keeping all of the meat intact that is good meat. And that's a really interesting thing that I want to try on other fish, but I just tried on this walleye here for the first time. Now I'm doing another fish, and as you'll see with this one, I didn't speed it up any more than it already is sped up the four times, but it's going much faster, and that just is a testament to every time that you're doing something, the more practice and reps you get, the better you're going to get at it. So hopefully, as I work on this channel, I'll get better at fishing and stop sucking so much, but for now, that's just how it is. This is all the fillets, obviously not dried off yet, but luckily, we got some other walleye that we're cooking. We got some egg wash, and then just some frying magic cheese and crumbs. Secret. Secret. Brian magic. Brian magic. It's a secret. I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna hang out with the family and then we'll see you with the food. So out with some hey, how are you? <laughs> Some salads. Somebody get plates and napkins and get some fishies. <laughs> that is not the grill he was talking about. This makes more sense. Ooh. Well, you already know what that's going to be, and that is delicious. So if you're new to my channel, which everybody is because this is the first video, it mean a lot to me if you subscribe and hit the like button. And although I suck at fishing, I am good at money. And if you want to see my channel where I talk all things personal finance, check it out right here. Thank you. See you next time.